Hi, Mike Kennedy with you, and we're looking at this Ozark Trail knife. This was the knife that was included in the, the uh, kit I bought for $30. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little about the case. Uh, one thing that's odd is this is pocket on the case. Well, you can't fit the sharpening stone in, and frankly, the ferro rod will fit in it. But, I don't know, it gives me the impression that this is going to loosen up and that's going to fall out. So, personally... I wanted to use that pocket for either of these two items, maybe something else. And uh, this isn't a, even though there's this plastic piece there, this isn't a positive lock uh, case like with some of the Mora knives. So in other words, once you press it in, uh, it's not necessarily in that snugly, so it can come out. So you definitely want to use your uh, Velcro latch here on this to secure it in the case. Now let's look at the general knife itself. Looking at this, I can tell that this knife is probably made out of sheet of metal. Now, what do I mean by sheet of metal and how are knives usually made? Well, if you haven't watched someone hand make a knife, you should sometime. You know, they basically start with a piece of iron, iron stock, and in a sort of a blacksmithing tradition, uh, they heat it in a forge to a certain temperature, and uh, then they start beating on it with a hammer, you know, getting it to the rough shape. Then they go through different ty types of cooling processes, uh, and then the knife is uh, further sharpened and things like that after the general shape is made. Uh, this pounding and this different heating and cooling process adds a lot of strength to the knife. Okay, so uh, when cutting a sheet out, I assume this is milled out of a sheet or even pressed out of a sheet or whatever. I, I could be wrong, but I'm going to guess that. And uh, so basically, you have this thickness going all the way through, and then once it gets more into the knife, it gets thinner. I assume, since this knife, if you go and find this uh, separately, these three items cost under $9.00. So I would assume this is made with a lot of uh, uh, automated equipment or uh, it just seems that way to me. The actual finishing of the knife is done with uh, automation rather than you cannot afford to have a person hand make it. But that's true of a lot of knives. But I just want to point out this idea that I think this is from a sheet of metal rather than it being a forged knife. Typically we consider forged knives to be uh, more rugged, okay? Now, there was no indication on what type of metal this was either. I mean, I'll try to do some research and try to ascertain whether this is, this is a high carbon steel or whether it's stainless steel. Uh, you can see that it's all black. This is a, I actually worked for a metal, photo, metal electroplating place at one time. And this is what they call as an anodized surface. You actually uh, will take this metal, you'll put it in a solution, run current through it, and it will actually plate the item to be black. And this is actually embedded in the metal to some degree. So it doesn't just come off with light scratching, it's, in, it's actually in the metal. So now let's discuss the overall profile of the knife. And what's the profile? Of? Well, that's the profile is the fact that it's a certain length this bevel here, the serrations, the blade here, the, the, the edge here. So all those go into the idea of the profile of a knife. And I guess one has to decide what they want for a profile for a knife. Now typically, people that are uh, big into what we call bushcrafting or working with wood don't like having this serration on the blade because what that does is the part of the blade that you're going to be using uh, for, we'll pretend this is the wood for now, I should have brought one, that you're using this fine part of the, the blade for control to make notches and different things like that isn't actually a sharp blade, it's a serration, okay? So where does this, the idea of serrations excel? Well, the idea of serrations excel for uh, cutting and for uh, what are we going to be cutting? Well, 
we might be cutting anything from uh, paracord to uh, safety belts and different things like that. We could use this as a kind of a, a sawing mechanism. You can see I saw it. Well, let me do it further in here. You can see that I made a notch there and it was quite a bit easier than trying to use a straight part of the blade. So you'll often find that if you stop a policeman and a, or a fireman and they have a knife in their pocket or a knife on them, a lot of times you'll see that it has this serration because they're much more interested in having the ability to cut something like a safety belt or uh, something similar to that in a rescue type or operation and they aren't as interested in being able to do fine carving with a knife okay so uh, I would suggest with this too we're gonna do this later but uh, this doesn't have a lanyard on it I would make a lanyard and so we're gonna just cut a piece of their paracord off and we're gonna see how well this cuts and, <laughs> and you can see having a little problem with it. Well, I did cut it eventually. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to thread it through here in a later video. Oh, it's just the right size to get the paracord through. And we're basically going to tie this or knot this up so that uh, we have something to make this thing a little bit bigger. Okay, so you could see the serrations weren't really that sharp. So let's do our typical test that you see so many people do. In other words, it's the paper cutting test. In other words, the idea should be that I should be able to slice this paper. If this knife is really sharp. I should be able to slice this paper. And I can't, well, if I do this, okay, let's see if I can, okay, if I go in, I can cut it. Oh, but see it ripped. So this is telling me that uh, as it comes from the manufacturer, this knife is not incredibly sharp. So the question is, how sharp does the knife need to be? In other words, here we have, this is a piece of a maple, and it's, uh, I just cut it off this tree actually, and it was uh, one of the suckers on it. And so this has been drying just for a few days. So the question is, can we cut? And <laughs> given enough force, we certainly can, but this is taking a lot of energy. It peels it good. Well, let's just uh, switch here to, let's say we wanted to make a notch in this. Well, you can see, again, I would say that this, this knife needs a good sharpening. Now, unfortunately, they have a whetstone here, but there were no directions. So if you were to just pick up this kit uh, and just use this, you might end up damaging the knife more than making it sharpen. Sharpened more to make it sharper. Uh, some of the things, the features that I like on the knife is it has this little guard here. I think that's really good to protect your hands a little. It has this little part, which is kind of like, I consider it kind of like for a thumb rest, although it isn't that comfortable. So, what are we going to say? Well, the knife definitely needs to be sharpened. We figured that out. But again, we've got to remember that in a survival situation, the best knife is any knife that you happen to have with you. So, uh... 
this knife is certainly going to be good if this is all you have. I would definitely take this knife and sharpen it up more. Maybe we'll do that and return with a second video on it. And uh, we'll go from there. Well, look at that. Had no trouble <laughs> digging into this uh, kind of soft st stump. But, uh, and again, I'm not a big fan of this paracord. It appears that this is threaded through some holes in here. Now, the problem is, is if you decide you need the paracord, you basically lose your handle. In other words, the knife gets much harder to grip because then you're just gripping onto a sheet of metal. So it's kind of like that, unless there's an emergency, and I guess you've got to figure out, is the emergency big enough that you want the cord enough so that your knife is going to be difficult to use later? I would suggest that you either keep this on permanently, or again, it would be very simple, especially if there are holes, I'll probably... Yeah, there's a hole there, there's a hole here. That would be enough to put a wooden handle on here. And uh, basically, you'd shape two halves the way you want them. You'd run uh, a post between those two holes to go out to the ends of each uh, part of the handle that you put on. In other words, you'd have a piece of wood here, a piece of wood here. The pins would go through. And you would, besides having those pins to hold it fast, you would actually use some really rugged glue that would make a good uh, connection between the two surfaces between the metal and the wood. So there you have it. And oh it's interesting to note here too that this is serrated on only one side. So as you sharpen this side it it might be a lot easier to deal with Eventually, though, if you just do keep doing that, you're going to end up turning the serrated part of the knife into a straight edge. Now, uh, there are other schemes for sharpening serrations, which usually involve using some type of rod because you want it to fit in those little divots, you know, to preserve the idea of this uh, serration. But uh, there we have it. The, the first look at the Ozark Trail uh, uh, knife. And uh, we're going to look more about the two companion pieces kind of to go with it. And we have the case. And we'll continue on looking at some of the other items as well.